I'm Christopher Springman, and this is Neff Talk, a podcast series created with nephrologists in mind from Satellite Healthcare, a not-for-profit dialysis provider and clinical researcher with a special focus on home as the industry's home dialysis leader. You really enjoy this work, don't you? I do. (laughs) I can hear the passion in your voice. You know, I hope that comes through. I mean, I can't imagine anything else. And it's just wonderful to be able to help your fellow man and do it in a way in which you, you use knowledge, compassion, and just empathy for patients who are dealing with really life-changing events and diseases. That's Dr. Randy Chen, MD, a full-time private practice nephrologist, medical advisor for Satellite Healthcare, and medical director for Satellite Healthcare's Dialysis Center in Daly City, California. Dr. Chen, thank you so much for joining us today on Neff Talk. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here. How would you differentiate Satellite Healthcare from other dialysis providers because you have had that experience? Satellite really puts the patient first. Being in any healthcare system, there are a lot of competing goals. Uh, I think Satellite really wants to improve patient lives and patient care. I'd like to talk to you today about patient education, which is really crucial, especially when you're dealing with individuals who may have a chronic kidney issue. What motivates you in terms of how you communicate with patients and how you listen? As a physician, I think that our primary goal is to educate patients. A patient will not make changes in their lifestyle will not heed medical advice unless you partner with them and really make them engaged and primarily in control of their decisions in terms of their health care. I think education is the cornerstone of patient uh, understanding of their disease process, particularly in my case with kidney disease. But there are differences in terms of patient motivation. For example, Some patients, because they feel very close to you, because they have a relationship with you as a physician and also as a provider, will do things to please you. Ultimately, while that's important, isn't it crucial for the patient to please themselves because they need to be motivated to do the right thing? I think that patient engagement is one of the most important things in terms of a physician and patient relationship. I really put education as in the forefront and everyone's motivation is different when they come to see a physician, but I think one expectation is that they will themselves be able to understand their problem and come to solutions with the guidance of an expert, such as a physician, but I don't think that just being told what to do or what's wrong is enough in order to improve a patient's outcome and their experience with the healthcare providers. When diagnosed with a chronic disease such as end-stage renal disease, it's important to educate patients about their condition, but tell me what is most important for dialysis or pre-dialysis patients to know, especially individuals who are facing a deteriorating kidney function and essentially have become a candidate for dialysis. I think there are a lot of misconceptions on the part of patients in terms of what renal replacement therapy or dialysis is. Oftentimes fear and a misunderstanding about how patients do on dialysis becomes a barricade for understanding and care. Patients will will often tell me, well, I have a friend who started dialysis and now he's fatigued and and feels horrible every day, and is that going to happen to me? I was just about to ask you that question, because invariably, while comparisons aren't fair, they're inevitable, aren't they? Yes, for sure. And your attitude, your understanding, and your expectations about what dialysis is, is going to help drive how you, you feel with the treatment. And so education in that part entails explaining what the process of dialysis is. Some people even think 
well, dialysis will improve my kidney function. And I have to tell them, no, it is actually a replacement for what your kidneys do. And what your kidneys do is they clean your blood, they help remove fluid, excess water and fluid, and other waste products. They have other functions as well, which I will often go into when I'm explaining what the kidneys do. Would you please talk about the transitional care needs of patients with CKD, chronic kidney disease, 4 and stage 5, as they prepare for dialysis? From the get-go, I think that longitudinal education and care. Now, uh, what is longitudinal education and care? Chronic diseases are different from acute diseases. Like, for instance, you have a cold, you go to the doctor, you get treated for that, and the symptoms go away. Chronic disease is usually progressive and over a lifetime. So when we talk about longitudinal, we're saying over the whole entire course, these chronic diseases will span most of your life if you're under the care of a physician for that particular chronic condition. And chronic kidney disease fits with, well within a chronic disease model. But that's one of the joys of being a nephrologist, isn't it? I've spoken with many of your colleagues, and in many respects, working with patients who have chronic diseases and also engaging their family, for example, is very rewarding and very fulfilling for you as a professional. Yes, exactly. You have different types of physicians. You have the surgeons who will do surgeries to correct the problem, and then the problem usually is solved in that way. But nephrologists work in a different capacity. They follow patients over a longer course. They usually involve other team members, interdisciplinary team members, to help educate patients such as dietitians, pharmacists, and social workers when in the dialysis centers. Could you talk about those relationships and partnerships, perhaps give our audience an illustration, a case history of a a favorite patient, someone who has very successfully, in your estimation, made the transition from the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, and engaged their family in the process too, much to their advantage. Does a patient story come to mind? Yes, I had a young man who presented with very uh, severe water retention or edema. Now, how young is young? 25. Ooh. 25. Young man, teacher's aide, engaged. And so he developed very severe kidney disease very quickly with all the symptoms you can imagine. Swelling, shortness of breath, nausea. I ended up having to start dialysis on him as he did not respond to treatment with prednisone, which would be the treatment for his condition. I would have thought he would have been a very, very good candidate for home dialysis therapy, but because the ultimate goal for him was to get him a transplant, and ultimately he did get a kidney transplant from his fiance, and is now doing quite well and was only on dialysis for a matter of a few months. This is a person within a year was diagnosed with kidney disease, ended up on dialysis, and then got a kidney transplant, and is doing fantastic. He was just a great patient all through, and really, you know, I mean, some people could have been angry. As you asked about the stages of grief, you know, obviously everyone expresses these differently, but he was able to accept it. He was able to look um, at the positive side, and, you know, with planning as partners and education, Uh, we were able to uh, really get him to where he needed to be, which is off dialysis and with a kidney transplant from a loved one. How would you describe your best qualities? And I'm going to answer the question for you because I have in mind listening. Are you an active listener? Do you listen with intent? My wife wouldn't say so, but I think my patients mostly think that I do listen. I'm there to listen, to examine, analyze, and give an answer. And I think that physicians, particularly in in my field where we're not doing procedures, we are managing patients with medications and also a, a medical advice. So you can't give advice unless you're listening to the question. Well, advice relates to patient education. What types of educational programs does Satellite Healthcare have in place for patients that you take advantage of? Well, Satellite Healthcare prides its mission on patient involvement, education, and improving lives. And you can't 
prepare someone for dialysis unless they have education. There's multimedia platforms, and we have the resources with human, with educators um, on an ongoing basis for our dialysis patients. And let's not forget the app. Yes, the app. Kidneys and Me for Apple devices. I have that on my iPhone, and it's very helpful, especially the library section. I really believe that education is not only empowering for patients and their families, but can give people a sense of relief in and of itself, because a chronic disease is as you suggested, is not a transitional event. It's something that you literally live with day in and day out. That's correct. And as you pointed out, involving family members, uh, not just the patient, often people will go to the internet and look up things and kind of be misinformed because there is a lot of information out there. But the Kidneys and Me app, other foundations that have a lot of good educational material, not only for the patient, but for families. But remember, this is going to affect more than just the patient. It's going to affect loved ones who will have to see their family members and loved ones go through quite an ordeal in dealing with chronic disease and uh, possibly, ultimately, dialysis. People live together. They shop together. They eat together. For a patient mm -hmm. who's on dialysis, this can be very challenging for the family, and as several nephrologists have, have suggested, taking a team approach, for example, to preparing meals can be a very crucial part to develop conversation and understanding among the members of the family. Satellite understands that it takes many people to be successful in whatever we're doing, and for patients improving lives and navigating through the complexities of dialysis and chronic kidney disease care, it does take a lot of support. Satellite Healthcare is a leader, the leader in home dialysis. When do you talk with patients about the option of dialyzing at home? When do you bring that up preemptively in the conversation? I would imagine that many patients who are candidates for dialysis are probably thinking in terms of a center. Sure. Bringing up the subject of dialysis is always difficult. A lot of people have fears. So understanding what dialysis is and what your options are when that time comes is extremely important. And if you ask most nephrologists, what kind of dialysis would you do? Would you do hemodialysis or home dialysis, peritoneal or home hemo? Uh, most nephrologists would say, I would do it at home. And that's because there is increased independence, self-engagement, self-direction. Isn't home dialysis ultimately more efficient? It's more efficient in terms of timing because you're doing your dialysis when you're sleeping. It's more efficient for lifestyle. As far as better outcomes, there's not a huge difference in those. I want people to understand that. For sure, it's more efficient in terms of time and the energy needed to be going to you know, a center versus doing it at home. How do you determine in concert with a patient if they would be an appropriate candidate for home dialysis. There might be some limitations in terms of if you've had a lot of abdominal surgeries, if you don't have a partner who can help you in case you need help setting up the peritoneal dialysis machine or the home hemodialysis machine. So partnership and, and support are important in that respect. And so that's why education is so important in terms of working with the patient to determine whether they would want to do the home modalities or in-center modalities, but I think anyone can do home. Let's bring in the work of the interdisciplinary team at Satellite Healthcare in terms of how they participate in this along with you and address the first 90 days, for example, as a patient adjusts to dialysis. The dialysis center doesn't just involve the physician and the patient. There is a whole team of, of players interdisciplinary team. We have nurses, we have dialysis technicians, dietitians, social workers. During the first 90 days, we know we have experience in how people will respond to dialysis, what we have to look out for. We try to educate the patient in terms of what they need to start concentrating on. Their life is changing. They can't drink 
the amount of fluids they used to drink. They can't eat the same foods they, they used to eat. There are a lot of different medication adjustments that have to be made. There is adjusting from a psychological standpoint. There are insurance issues and other uh, issues involving navigating the healthcare system, which the social worker can assist in. In the first 30 days, we actually have a, a team meeting, interdisciplinary team meeting in which the patient is invited to attend, and then at 90 days as well. And these are so that we can all communicate as a team together to make sure that the medical, the social, the dietary, uh, psychological, and any needs that the patient have regarding dialysis are met. Is there a moment of transition of enlightenment where the patient arrives at a point, perhaps early on or, or at least at some point, when they have accepted the reality of dialysis? Is there a moment when they say, you know, Dr. Dr. Chen, uh, this isn't as bad as I thought it would be? I would say that's the majority of patients. Oh, really? Yeah, I would say. And I think the fear factor in patients who start dialysis Really, that's the most overwhelming emotion that patients have. Once you realize that you can have a good life, we can help get you to the best life while on dialysis that you can have, that people realize that they aren't alone. They realize that they're cared for and people care about them. The staff knows more about the patients in terms of their lives and what they're up to than, than I do, for sure. You know, I have a patient who was really basically, he said, well, you know, I'm just going to not do dialysis and pass away because I, I just don't feel I can do it. Now he's saying, you know, I'm just so glad that I feel better. But let's back up a little bit. I'd like more of the backstory when a patient says, and I assume this is not unusual, I'm sorry, you know, this is it. I, uh, I think this is the moment when I'm going to check out. Yeah. I find out what their understanding is about what dialysis is, and most times it's a misconception. They say, "Well, I'm going to go there. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, feel feel lousy the whole time, and then I'm going to be sleeping and tired, and I won't be able to go anywhere, do anything. I'll just be, just be existing, but not really living." And I tell them, "That's not the case. Why don't you?" visit a dialysis center? Why don't we have some people speak to you about that? Maybe mentors, patients themselves. Or perhaps talk to patients who are doing home dialysis. Is that available? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, mentors. Um, you know, Satellite has a research program in which we're, we're actually trying to look into this and have, have mentorships in home dialysis. Oh, a little hand-holding. Yes. Yeah, better to come from a patient who's actually, quote-unquote, has skin in the game. You know, we, I have not had anyone who stopped immediately with dialysis um, that I can recall. They often adjust to it and feel better and, and do okay. Finally, there's been a lot of media coverage over the last couple of years about living donors especially. I'm thinking specifically about the fellow who was at Disney World wearing the t-shirt, walking around, I need a kidney, here's my phone number and blood type. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as a nephrologist that there is more public awareness of end-stage renal disease, kidney failure, and kidney donorship? Well, the sheer numbers of patients on dialysis or in need of kidney transplant has grown over decades here. I think there is more awareness, uh, thankfully, uh, because of programs like the National Kidney Foundation and, and others, and satellite healthcare as well. One of our goals in satellite healthcare is to increase the number of kidney transplants, awareness of kidney transplant education. Unfortunately, the allocation of organs is limited still. Getting donors, whether they be live donors, a living related, or deceased donors, is difficult. A lot of people are putting expectations on future like artificial kidneys, but for now, the best option is kidney transplantation. And I do believe that there is more awareness with social media, with just education about the need for organ donation in general. You really enjoy this work, don't you? I do. <laughs> I can hear the passion in your voice. You know, I hope that comes through. I mean, I can't imagine doing anything else. And it's just wonderful to be able to help your fellow man and do it in a way in which you, you use knowledge, compassion, and just empathy for patients who are dealing with really life-changing events and diseases. Dr. Chen, thank you so much for joining us today on Neft Talk. I've really enjoyed this conversation, and you're a very good listener, too. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for listening. (laughs) 